Now let's consider an example of a single SNP causing a disease. And for this case, we're going to look at sickle cell anemia. And sickle cell anemia, what happens is that a protein called hemoglobin gets deformed. So first, we have our DNA double-stranded DNA, and we've got our bases, and so maybe these are G's, guanines, right? And right here, we have a thymine, and that is incorrect. What we were supposed to have was actually an adenine but we have a thymine. And so because we have a thymine, we have a, uh, you know, a difference in our DNA. That means that our amino acid is, could at least um, be a different sequence of amino acids. And in this case it is. And if this confuses you, um, go, go back and take a look at when we talked about the central dogma um, and, and how we go from DNA and through transcription and translation. And we'll, we'll do a brief recap here. So here we have our amino acid chain. And amino acids are the building block blocks of proteins. And we got that from over here, our DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. And so after our amino acid, then we go to protein. So somewhere in here we have transcription is when DNA goes to RNA and then eventually the RNA gets translated into a protein and so now we have the amino acid sequence and as the amino acid sequence um, is combined you know each amino acid is stuck to the end of the chain this sequence forms a protein and maybe for our particular protein um, maybe we're supposed to look uh, something, you know, something like this, and it actually looked something like this. And so this is a, a slight change, but because it has a different shape, it will have a different function, or at least it, it could have a different function. And in the case of sickle cell anemia, when we have this SNP, where thymine replaces adenine, we get a different amino acid sequence, which results in a differently shaped protein, which results in different behavior. Now, the particular protein that we're looking at, as we said, is hemoglobin. And I briefly mentioned that this is used in red blood cells. And what hemoglobin does, it's, it's the oxygen-carrying protein. Um, and because of our deformed hemoglobin, um, our our red blood cells are normally oval shaped and uh, in the case of uh, with hemoglobin when we have the sickle cell anemia SNP uh, they're crescent shaped okay and so you can see there's a clear deformation here and that results in phenotypic consequences and we're going to get into that in a, in a minute. So uh, what I want to do is just label this as uh, genetic. And then we'll go down here to phenotypic. And then ultimately, we're going to see the symptoms. So phenotypic means the physical manifestation and that just means you know what we can actually see uh, so the physical manifestation of genetic variance so one example might be um, eye color eye color is a phenotype and the genotype the genetic component could be a certain sequence of base pairs or nucleic acids. Okay, and so if you have a different sequence, you'll have a different eye color. In this case, 
Our genetic difference is an adenine to a thymine, and the phenotypic difference is the shape of our red blood cells. And also the shape of our, our protein, which you know is causes the shape of our red blood cells. Now, the symptoms that result from the phenotype, um, the main ones for sickle cell anemia are pain, shortness of breath, and also organ damage. And if we think about this, th it, it makes sense. Because of our deformed hemoglobin protein, and therefore our poorly shaped red blood cell, um, we cannot carry oxygen as well. So someone with sickle cell anemia can't transport oxygen as well, which means that they'll have shortness of breath, and organ damage can result from not having enough oxygen to your organs, and as a result of organ damage, uh, in concert with that, you can get a lot of pain. So now we know uh, some of the symptoms, and another reason for some of these symptoms, in addition to not being able to carry oxygen effectively, uh, is what happens at breakpoints in blood vessels. So throughout the body, uh, blood vessels can split off into more vessels, and normally um, in a blood vessel we have what's called laminar flow, which is really all that means is it's it's smooth, okay? It, it moves or it flows nicely, and um, what happens at branch points is sometimes it can get turbulent, and Normally, that's not too much of an issue, um, but when you have crescent-shaped blood vessels, like you do when you have sickle cell anemia, they can start to clump up just because of the way that they're shaped. And so you can get some clogging of, of um, blood vessels, and that can also result in, in the symptoms that we discussed. Now, one last thing that I want to note here uh, is that this is a, a very rare and simple case. Normally, with diseases, there are um, interactions between multiple SNPs, and so you can have multiple SNPs contributing to a single disease. So in the next video, we're going to talk about a more common and, and complex case, which is when you have multiple SNPs contributing to your disease.